Hey there guys, Shane here from Fugitech 3D Printing and I got some fun things from Kodak and today we're checking out their Flex 98 filament. Welcome back guys. So if you remember recently, I reviewed Kodak's PLA Plus. You can check the video up here and it turned out pretty well. And they had told me that more filament was coming and actually while I was filming that video, I got three boxes of filament, an additional three. And one of them here is the Flex 98. So let's take a look at the box and see how it is and we'll get some prints done. So the box is the same as the PLA Plus was. It is super duper branded. They have their logo or name on almost every single side of the box. And here on the data panel, it is Black 6C, Flex 98, thermoplastic polyurethane, so it's TPU filament, 1.75 millimeters, 750 grams, and it is to be printed at 235 plus or minus five degrees centigrade. They have a QR code and their little uh, UPCs here for you know storage and stuff like that. And once we open it up here, you're greeted by another Kodak logo here. The filament pops right out. We can set these off to the side now. And here we have the spool, which is kind of like bent. It is so sucked down because of the vacuum. It actually is bending the spool down onto the flexible filament. That's funny. So again here, Kodak, they have their logo right here on here. The other sticker, Flex 98, 60 black, and that's it. Uh, it says right on the bottom, keep bag sealed at all times. Now, flexible filament is hydroscopic. Pretty sure that's the right word. Which means the flexible filament will absorb moisture out of the air. It is getting springtime here where I am. Rain is happening more often. So you're gonna wanna keep this in the bag as much as possible do your prints and put it back in. Or if you have a heated chamber in your printer and you're able to put this inside of there, great. If you have a storage container that you 3D printed, there's lots of them out there, you can put this inside of there with a couple of silica packets and it will generally stay a lot drier and you can continue to print with it. I generally notice that I can print like two or three days before I start having issues that I need to throw this in the food dehydrator and get it dried out again. Then I can print again with it. And another nice thing that they do here is they are using the Ziploc bags, which is nice because again, you can reseal it, hence why they tell you to keep it sealed in this bag. Otherwise, you obviously can't even use it. Here we are. Okay, there's one silica pack here in the middle. And then here is the filament. So again, lots of nice cutouts around it so that they can well, so that you can see how much filament you have in there. It is a Kodak created spool. So they have their own spool designs. They have these weird kind of cutouts here you're supposed to yank the filament into to kind of hold on to it. I don't know, it might be a little bit better. It does feel a lot better now, yeah. It feels a lot better with the flexible filament to kind of pull it in there and it kind of keeps it tight. That was not the case with the PLA. The PLA is too stiff and it doesn't really compress at all when you pull it into something. So that's a lot better. The wine on this is really nice, really nice and straight. Um, but you can definitely tell that they really, really cranked this down. It actually has nicks in it though. Almost as if this filament was bundled and then put onto here. But there are nicks in the filament every so often. Like depressions kind of in the filament. I don't know if that's gonna affect anything. I really hope it doesn't. But the only way to find out is throw this on a couple printers and get it printing off. See you guys back here in just a second. All right, so Kodak Flex 98. This filament proved to be a little bit challenging for me is I either couldn't keep it dry or I just could not nail down a proper temperature for it. Uh, it worked fairly well for most things. Uh, overhangs on this Moai statue uh, did not <laughs> do well at all. I didn't think it would but I kind of just wanted to see what would happen. He's kind of got a little bit of a beard going on down there, you and me both, buddy. But aside from that, it was a super consistent print. I have some other ones here. I did, you know, the wheel, which turned out pretty well. I tried a big vase, did not work well at all. Smaller vase was good until we got to the top. Uh, this filament is fairly flexible, so I feel that it's, it's you know, moving a little bit 
during the actual printing process. So that's kind of one issue I had there. I did a maker coin, I did a bracelet. So let's take a closer look and see how these turn out. So I changed up. The first thing I printed was this Moai statue. And you can see he's got kind of a beard going. Flexible filament does not do very good over overhangs. Uh, but this is a pretty steep overhang right here. PLA even sometimes has problems there. The bottom of the ears, the nose, top of the eyes here. Uh, they all presented a little bit of issue there, but nothing like the, the chin. Again, that's like his little beard going on there. But other than that, first layer was good. It's pretty consistent throughout the print. This was printed on my Forgetech 2020 i3 with the Aero extruder. So he is flexible. You can see I put a little bit too many layers on him. I think I should just did two printers. I did three printers just to make sure it would like fully, fully fill in. And then four top, four bottom. And the top looks good, you know, filled that in real nice. That's super solid there though. And the bottom, you know, pretty solid. Hard to kind of push in on that. But it turned out okay, but again, you know, kind of have to deal with that kind of stuff. And then I have my Maker Coin, and this turned out okay. This is right after the Moai. But I started to see a little bit of fishiness with it, kind of like it might have been popping, like it might have had some water in it. And I'm pretty sure it did because it started out decent, but then after a little while, it just ended up going to kind of crap. And I didn't pull any of the support off of this yet because pulling support off of the flexible filament is tough. I usually need to use a pair of side cutters in order to get it off, get nice and close to it, and then give it a little snip sometimes. It's pretty tough, no matter the flexible filament, I'll say, at least for me. If I do this print with PLA, they come off without a problem. You know, the settings are all perfect. I might just need to change up my settings a bit for flexible filament support. Uh, but either way, it did fairly well. Again, it looks a little like wet, you know, like it was, you know, maybe too hot or there was moisture in the plastic, plus appeared to the top. And there's some missing issues, missing parts here. So it seems like it, or it might have been some moisture inside the filament. So this did not come out perfect, but it did work. It's just ish. So then I print out this wheel. This is one of the wheels from the Lego project that I did just a lot smaller. This is just 300% uh, of the actual model. And you can see it's a little hairy in here. And I thought I had my slicer set not to cross any of the openings and just go around. But I think the fan might have been a little bit too much, which was actually was making these wisps. You can get the exact same issue in PETG when you do that. But otherwise, very nice layer lines all the way around it. This again, this was right after the, you know, my Fugatech coin. I didn't take the filament off, didn't dry it yet at all. It's just how from one to the next to the next, this is how this part ended up turning out. And I was happy with it. A little stringy, again, we can just peel these off. A little bit hairy in there, but you can just pull those off with ease and they're all basically gone after just a few seconds. So not too terrible, but not the best. I tried this bracelet. I gotta take you in here though. I've tried this one on the FT5 and look how it extruded. It just could not handle having the nozzle that close and doing these, you know, it's just a vase mode print just like this. It just keeps going around, around, around. It could not handle that. Now I did print this in another flexible filament recently and it came out okay. So I think, but I print that on a different machine. So it's not really a great test because I didn't use the same machine for the most filaments. Uh, I did use the same G code though. Yeah, it just didn't do very well at all in the vase mode. And you'd think it would because it's not retracting at all. So where are these holes coming from? It's just didn't work out very well. And it's also, I will say, this one is not very um, elastic. Like the elasticity is pretty low. Like yeah, it'll, it'll go if I give a little, like it, it, it goes, but it's very slow to resume its shape compared to other filaments that I've used. All right, some vases. So now with these vases, this was printed on the Forgetech 2023. It's printed on the Forgetech FT5. And this was looking okay from the front, but then when I got around to it, I saw this, almost like it was performing retractions, but it wasn't. I double checked my G code, retractions were off for this, and it was printed in vase mode. So why in the world is this one piece that's having issues? I don't understand. Like, I don't know why it did that. This happened on other prints with other printers, but see what's happening here again at a different spot. It, I don't know what that was all about. It just seems like maybe the jerk settings are not proper on that machine for this. Like, I'm just not sure. So I just printed it smaller on the 2023. It was going fantastic until we got up here to the top. And I think this flexible filament is just a little too flexy in the kind of way that it, it works. Um, but yeah, up top, I did have some under extrusions there 
for that. I did dry the filament several times between a few of these prints and it just, you know, was giving me issues from the get-go. But then I printed this Hodor and it is absolutely freaking perfect. Except for the fact that I didn't actually adjust the bed properly so it printed off the bed a little bit. But if you ignore that, the walls just look great on all sides of this thing. The top layers came out really nice. All the sides here are really nice. The bottom is really nice. You know, again, except for that, that's just too funny when I did that. I got so mad when I saw that. But if you take care of that, you know, you have a really nice, flexible, big Hodor doorstop. This is 200% the original model. And it is just really nice. I use one on the some of the doors downstairs. And it's just a lot of fun to have. And if you get the reference, it's great. Uh, but I don't want to do any spoilers for anybody if you watch Game of Thrones. So what I think, the Flex 98 is okay filament. It's not really great. It's not as premium as I was hoping it was going to be. Uh, all of the filament, it seems like it was put inside something else. Because the first several, you know, I would say a good 30, 40, maybe 50 meters, all had kinks on it. So it's almost as if that this was on something else zip tied and then it came onto here or that one of the gears was a little clamped too much and as it made its round to that point it was just pinching the filament. Each time was fairly evenly spaced so I'm, I'm thinking more often like or more likely that was the problem. Uh, it is a strong filament I'll say that like pulling it it is very strong. It printed fairly easily at 200, print this one at 240 degrees centigrade, 70 degree bed, uh, the same as a bunch of other ones I've done. And they call for 235 plus or minus 5C on the sticker here. But again, it worked out fairly well. I, I think I was finally getting a little bit better with it here. And I had had it in the dryer for about two days between trying this print, well, this one FT5, then I got to this one. I was like, you know what, I need to dry it. Two days in the dryer, it came out and it printed much better. I also did slow it down a bit on the 2020 i3 just in case that might have been an issue. So this was actually printed at 20 millimeters a second, vice 30, which the rest of these are printed at with direct drive extruders. All right, disclosure time. So this film was sent to me by Kodak for the purpose of this review and the money was exchanged. They're not paying me to say any of this because they wouldn't be happy. I guess if I was saying it was meh, which it is. But either way, they didn't send me anything. They just said I could try out their filament and I'm excited to do so. So I thank Kodak for the opportunity to test this out and all the other filaments you guys sent me to try out. There's the end of it, guys. So I appreciate you guys watching the video. If you liked it, thumbs up, thumbs down if you didn't. If you want to talk to me about it, leave some comments down below. I want to hear from you guys. I try to respond back as soon as I can. So have those comments ready for me. If you guys want to follow what's going on, on my channel, make sure to become a subscriber and then hit that bell icon. That way you get an email notification anytime I upload new content or do live streams, anything like that. You're one of the first ones to know when it happens. If you want to support me financially, right down below me is going to be a Patreon link. Go ahead to there, donate me a dollar more. I greatly appreciate current Patreons. You're awesome as always. And then if you want to just do like a one-time deal, there's a Streamlabs tip or buy me a coffee down there. I'm saving up for some LEDs or a Prusa i3 Mark III currently. We'll see how that ends up going. And if you guys want to do your daily shopping, there's a bunch of free links down below. Amazon, Maker Geeks, Matter Hackers, things like that. Update your bookmarks with those. Do your daily shopping and a little slice of what you buy comes to me at no cost for you. And it really helps build the channel. I thank you guys so much for watching. And until next time, happy printing.